Good morning, saints. How is everybody? Uh, we, we know that uh, God works in mysterious ways and also has a sense of humor. Right before I came up here, I noticed my flowers unzipped, and how embarrassing would that be? <laughs> Especially on my first Sunday back after a while, I've missed you all. I need to ask how many people are excited that we're going to be bringing forth a candidate for our senior pastor. I, I am very excited, and I know Reverend Craig is also excited. I've had the chance, Dale and I have had the chance to talk with him several times, and I'm just super excited, and he is. And also, I got an email this, or a text this morning just to say that he's been thinking about us, and I hope we have a good Sunday service today. I want to welcome everybody. If it's your first time here, of course, we welcome you and welcome you to come back. And also people online. So, um, today is our uh, first Sunday of the month, and uh, we'll be taking up the second offering for the building fund. Also, um, if, if you are here for the first time and want to get on our mailing list and name tag list, there's a yellow form in the back that you can fill out and you'll get on that. I, I want to remind you that we're still collecting new school supplies and I'm, I'm excited about that there's stuff right over here, backpacks and school items for people, uh, kids in Honduras. So continue that. You can bring those back anytime. Our upcoming speaker uh, for the September the 11th will be Andrew White. And I just found out this morning that Andrew's dad, who's had a long-term illness, uh, uh, died. And so I hope you'll keep uh, Andrew White and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, today is also, since it's the first Sunday, we have our... Um, Food pantry blessing, and if you will, if you'll just pray with me for, for that. Heavenly Creator, we're so excited that we're going into a new phase of our church. I just want to thank you for continuing to bless us that we can offer this ministry of, of uh, the food pantry. And that um, from last month to this month, we've doubled the people that have come in to, to receive that food. I want to thank you that we're, we're continuing to able to do that. I want to thank you for the people that work the pantry. But more than that, I want to thank you for the people that are coming in to share that blessing, picking, uh, getting food. For it's in your name I pray now and always. Amen. I want to tell you that the church will be closed tomorrow, Labor Day. Happy early Labor Day, in fact. And as a working person, when I was a working person, I remembered three-day weekends. I couldn't wait. So for you people that are uh, working, congratulations. Have a good one. So we've mentioned that we're bringing forth the senior pastor. And I will bring Carol up to share some more information with you. Thank you. Yeah, give her a hand. And not only her, we, we will still uh, thank the uh, Pastoral Search Committee for, for their wonderful work. That's not completed yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful journey. Wonderful people working together to find a pastor for this church. Um, it's Pastor... Craig, I thought it was up there, Reverend Craig Cranston. 
He is the associate pastor at Tampa MCC at the moment, but um, prayfully, if he is the one you affirm, he will be the senior pastor here. Um, I want to share with you some upcoming events. And at the end of service, there will be a flyer passed out to everyone, so please look for it. There will be people at the door, at the back, at the fellowship, all around with flyers, with a bio of Reverend Craig's, oh, there he is. And that's what I was going to speak to. <laughs> um, we are meeting on September 17th. We are going to have a reception, a meet and greet, and this meet and greet is for anyone who would like to come and meet Pastor Craig Cranston. Very pleased to have him join us for that day and that reception. Um, I think that is about it. The invitation is there. The other thing is that we, the board will be calling a special congregational meeting, one item, and please, please attend if you are a member. Um, if you're not a member, you're welcome also, but we need members to vote. It will be to affirm if the congregation agrees. Uh, that will be held directly after service on the 18th, the day that Reverend Craig will deliver the message. And we ask that day also that you remain, come to fellowship. There will be a small reception, food. And then if the affirmation goes through, we will call Reverend Craig back and he will come here and sign his contract here with all of you. So please keep that date. Don't make plans for brunch. Have your brunch here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Um, just to go over those dates again, you'll, you'll see this in rent. The uh, Pastoral Search Committee has done a great job communicating, but the, the, the candidating weekend is the 17th and 18th of, of September. Uh, the 17th, we'll have a meet and greet at 4.30 here at the church with the pastor. And uh, then uh, Reverend Craig will give the uh, message on Sunday. Uh, and then, we'll go, and then we'll have a congregational meeting, especially called congregational meeting after that to uh, affirm, elect him as our senior pastor or not. And uh, then uh, it was especially, uh, it was especially, uh, Craig want, especially wanted to come back for a ceremonial, if he's elected, a ceremony signing of that contract if he is a firm elected. So that's our plan. If you have any questions, I'm going to try to be up here and maybe Carol or the Pastoral Search Committee will stand here with me uh, today if you have any burning questions so we can answer that because we want every member of this church here uh, at that special congregational meeting. And I know I'm repeating everything Carol said about, but we need to get this information out and um, go from there. W my last thing here is um, this Wednesday, we're going to start uh, choir rehearsal, right, Ron? Yes. You're expecting many people here. We're going to... Yeah, at least 50. Uh, I've got, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so this Wednesday at 2, we'll start uh, choir rehearsal. And Ron has also shared with me that in order to be open and uh, fluid, fluid is my new word here, um, if people have an issue of 2 p.m., please see Ron, and they're going to be fluid on their times. Um, again, I welcome Jim Wagner to bring in our message again. I, I appreciate him and thank him in advance. And uh, thank you all.
call to worship. Like clay, we arrive at this time of worship. Shapeless and full of potential, we arrive. Like clay, we prepare for this time of worship. Stretched and twisted into a formation, we prepare. Like clay, we enter this time of worship. Stretched, warm, and ready for war, we encounter. You may be seated. together. St. John the Apostle is known as a praying church. We pray in many, many different ways. They're supposed to be listed on the screen there, but we do meet on Tuesday nights at 630. Everyone is welcome to join us. We also meet at nine o'clock in the morning on Sundays. Um, the prayer bears are on vacation right now, but you can always send those to someone who uh, needs a little extra love and prayer. And we also pray through this book here. We'll read these prayers at this time. We keep the book in the back of the sanctuary over there all week long. We do have several prayers in here today. We have prayers for the White family on the passing of Don White, Andrew's father. We're happy he is at peace after his long illness, but sad he is not with us anymore. Prayers for the people over Ukraine. Prayers for my boyfriend Jeff for his MRI. And prayers for my mom, Annette, for her margins to clear on her incision on her arm. Does anyone else have a prayer they'd like to speak out? I want to give a prayer of thanks because I've been so blessed to work with a group of people that are amazing. And we have uh, worked hard and enjoyable. We have always been hard. And I thank God for all of you. Oh, prayers of thanks. Who else? Anybody else? Yes, Annette. Oh. Wonderful. Prayers of thanks and healing. Prayers of healing. We always want to hear those stories. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious, loving Creator, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you for bringing us all together. Thank you for the hope of a new pastor. And we thank you so much for the people that work so hard to bring in here. Please bless them all for their time spent. And just thank you, God, for Jesus. We thank you for his loving presence in our lives. We thank you for the forgiveness we feel each and every day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us. And we just ask that we would all feel that spirit. I feel that spirit here. Thank you for that blessing, Lord. We thank you for all the answered prayers, so many answered prayers today. And we are so looking forward to your future the future you have planned for us. And we thank you, thank you, and ask you to just fill us with your love and joy so we can share that with the people we meet this week. 
the people who need you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah, Jeremiah <clears throat> chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from God, Jehovah. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay he w was marred in his hand. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of God Jehovah came to me. God Jehovah said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? Declares God Jehovah. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what God Jehovah says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. Here ends the reading. Our gospel reading for today is from Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose the leaders of one country are about to go to war against the leaders of another country, won't they first sit down and consider whether they are able with 10,000 soldiers to oppose those coming against them with 20? If they are not able, they will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was um, 40 years old when I was ordained. And uh, by that time, I had four kids at home, and we had already had dozens of foster babies we took care of. So I knew my way around a diaper, let's put it that way, and cleaning up herb and all that stuff. So I thought I knew quite a bit about humility. I really did. So my first day on the job at the church, um, 
this uh, German lady called me and she said, Deacon Wagner, you need to come tomorrow. I'm going to die. Okay, so I, I set it for uh, the next morning at 10.30. I would go to her house. She wanted final blessings and, and that. So, so I went to her house and I heard her say, come in, come in. And um, I walked in and she's in a hospital bed right there in the, um, in the living room. And she says, Wagner, you are early. You sit there and be quiet until Price is Right is over. <laughs> uh, so I did. But anyway, I, we had a really nice uh, visit with her and uh, just a lovely lady. She had lost her first husband with um, the first uh, Kaiser War, and then she lost her second husband in the Hitler Wars, and then somehow she got to the United States, and it was at the end of her life. So um, I was ready to go, and then she says, now you kneel down, and I will bless you. So I knelt down, and she gave me this long blessing in Germany, and um, I said, is that all good stuff? She said, it's good, it's good. So that was uh, a little learning experience in humility. The very next week um, was Holy Week and Maudy Thursday, and the pastor said, oh, by the way, on Maudy Thursday, you and I will be washing the feet of parishioners. Yeah. So like 25 or 30 people came up to each one of us, we washed their feet. Humility. Jesus teaches us throughout all the Gospels about humility, especially Luke's Gospel. Today he warned about boasting about um, building, a, building something and running out of money. He admonished a military leader to make peace, be humble, swallow your pride before going to a needless war. Previously, he told guests at a banquet, sit at the lower places, sit at the lower places, and maybe you will be invited to come up. Be humble, be humble. Humility is not always acknowledged as a relevant trait to possess, but it is in fact a character strength Humility is having the self-esteem to understand that though you are doing well, you need not brag or boast about it. Humility helps one to be more compassionate and empathetic to others, considering others' beliefs and opinions when they're not ours. Humility is being less self-involved and more attuned to others. It is a religious virtue. Humility means discipleship. Maybe you can think of people in your life who emanate this virtue. I'm always, I always think of people like Mother Teresa, and Jimmy Carter, Dorothy Day, very humble servants. Humility does not mean that we need to be quiet that we don't have opinions, that we're not leaders. It doesn't mean we're subdued. Remember Jesus often rebuked the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He got angry at people selling stuff in the temple. He scolded Peter numerous times. And he told Martha she did not choose the better way. Are we humble as Jesus calls us to be? Maybe we think, this is how I am, and I'm not going to change. I'm too old to change. In this very congregation, there are many people who humbly go about their tasks without much, if any, attention. Those who set up for coffee hour and clean up, those up in the video booth, our ushers, food shelf workers, 
They go humbly about their responsibilities. In our daily actions with others, we can all grow in humility that Jesus calls us to. One way that each of us can do this is when we talk to another person. When someone is speaking to us, most of us, while they're speaking, are composing our answer, our reply to them. Rather than listening to the content being said, we reply too quickly without drawing out the further message that they want us to hear. Because we maybe think it is so important for them to hear what we have to say. I know I'm that way way too often and I try to catch myself at it. Recently a friend of mine, a lady called me and said she had a terrible week, kidney stone. She said it was worse than giving birth. I immediately jumped in and said, oh yeah, I've had two of those. So I realized I was not listening to her. I was telling her my stuff. It's not easy to change. We are called to be humble with all others, not just our partner, not just our friends, not just our acquaintances, but with everyone we encounter, even those we don't like. I'd like to leave you with this final thought. Jesus knew Jesus, Judas's heart, but he still washed his feet. Amen. For our call to, work, call to offering, the cost of discipleship is bold and radical. It requires a countercultural giving of possessions and self. Let us risk the safety of ordinary and choose to build with God by sharing our tithes, offerings, and our very selves. May the ushers come forward.
and gracious God for these gifts of time, talent, and treasure. We ask that you would bless these gifts, that you would multiply them, and that you would guide us in the way that you would like us to use them for the glory of your kingdom and furthering the growth of our church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. St. John the Apostle and all metropolitan community churches around the globe celebrate an open communion. You need not be a member of this church or of any church to come to this table. To prepare ourselves for this meal, let's join together in a few moments of silent meditation, confession, and or prayer. As your sister in Christ, I remind you, we are a loved and forgiven people. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You are creating a new heaven and a new earth where all suffering will cease and enemies will live together in peace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymns. you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ you told us of signs that would come before your promised new creation by the baptism and suffering and death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made us one in a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, eat all of you for this is my body which is broken for you. Do this and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is, the blood of my new, uh, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, in the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. Redeemed by his blood, by the Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry for all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to sing. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Until we return to regular communion celebration, the communion elements are available at the welcome table and here at the altar. During our invitation to communion, to be consumed after communion meditation hymn. As we eat and drink these in your presence, remind us again that whosoever will may come, for all are welcome, for us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple of your glory. The table is set. <clears throat>
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Strengthen our faith that miracles continue to happen. Grant that we may go in, into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 benediction. Before your birth, you were wonderfully and fearfully made. Like clay, may God continue to reform and reshape you into, the tr into your truest self, now and every day. Amen. Amen. Amen.